Welcome to this edition of Christian Connections. Uh, tonight we've got some really, really exciting stuff to uh, tell you and uh, to, to teach you from the Bible. We have a special guest uh, that uh, we're going to introduce in just a minute, but we're also trying something new uh, with Sheila. She's out of town. She's out of the country, but she's joining us live uh, right here by the internet uh, on uh, this edition of Christian Connections. Our special guest is Guillermo Borda, and uh, you're a pastor, are right? you? I'm a, a PhD student yeah. at Angels University. Yeah, you're, and how, how far along are you? I am around in the, in the middle of the program. Yeah, so and you're, you're hanging tough? <laughs> Trying to. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we have um, uh, Dr. David Taylor uh, with us uh, as usual. Welcome. Thank you so much. Glad to be here, as usual. As usual. It's just so really nice to see you. And of course, uh, Sheila Hodgkins. Uh, she is uh, uh, out of the country. And uh, Hello, Sheila. Hi, Marlon. How you doing? Hi, everybody. I'm great. Uh, it's, it's nice to have you. I'm great. Yeah. Uh, you're cutting out a little bit, so uh, we'll just kind of read your lips and, and guess of what you're saying from time to time. But thank you so much for... Uh, spending all of your night, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really late out there, isn't it? It's early, actually. Oh, how early? It's, an, it's about 2 a.m. 2 a.m., yeah, that's, to me, that's late. Uh, early starts at about 5. Uh, also, Ganem Hanna, with his special commentary, uh, will be with us in, in just a few minutes. But I want to tell you that we are focusing on Jesus Christ. The message from Guillermo is, or Guillermi, uh, is uh, daily growth in Christ. And if you have your Bibles handy, uh, you can just get a head start by opening them to Second Peter. That's one of the verses that he's going to uh, refer to. Of course, uh, we have some great music too. Uh, coming up, uh, Josie M. Bailey Abbas. Did I say that right? Abbas Abbas. Uh, also, uh, Pamela Nolasco, uh, she's there with the mic, and uh, we have the, the uh, Peace Brothers, Julian and uh, Ivan, to bring us this uh, really special music. Lift up your heart here on the Christian Connections, LLBN. Eager to bless his children 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, special greetings to all of you up there, to my colleagues here on the stage, and to Sheila in France. Sheila, you are truly demonstrating the love and commitment to God's work and the ministry of LLBN by joining us at 2 a.m. France time or Paris time. So thank you for being with us. All right. Uh, so good to see you all, folks. And uh, allow me just to start with my comments, and I'll join my teams here uh, right behind me. Uh, the Apostle Paul walked with Jesus in amazing and inspiring ways. Believers are offered more than just the reward of heaven. Those who trust Christ for salvation will be richly provided with an entrance to the kingdom of Jesus. Those same believers are also given the chance at living abundantly in the Christ-like qualities of goodness, godliness, and can lead and minister Christ's commandments. Yes, we can all walk and work with Christ if we believe. Hopefully, this program sermon will shed some more light on this promise. I'll join my team now. Marlon? Well, thank you, Ganem. Walking with Jesus was the title of his special co uh, commentary, and, and uh, that's kind of the theme here today with uh, all of us, especially our uh, pastor-to-be. Marlon, I would say that's going to be our theme for the next 90 days. Should be for every day for the rest of our lives. <laughs> well, there's going to be a specific theme we'll talk about later. Yes. That will fit with this theme and the 90 days special oh. uh, for the next 90 days. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, well, thank you. But uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, the title of uh, Glaramy's uh, presentation is Daily Growth in Christ. And can, Dr. Taylor, can we su survive without daily growth in Christ? That daily growth in Christ is so vitally important. It helps us to grow, to understand ourselves, and people can see there's something different about us. So that daily growth, that connection, mm. causes us to glow with a joy and something, hey, there's something different about you. What is it? It's my daily growth in Jesus, and that's so vitally important. Yeah. Sheila. Your daily growth in Jesus, uh, in Christ, how, how do you accomplish that? What do you do? You know, it's more like, it's like a relationship. It's just developing that personal relationship with Christ. And, and with that, you, I, you grow. So it's always just connecting to God every day. Yeah. Like talk to a your spouse. Communicating to each other. Mm, yeah, that's so important. The communication between mm. your spouse and be, between your family and uh, those that you interact with uh, every day in the parking lot, in the parking lot, in the supermarket, and and uh, in your driveway as your neighbors walk by. Uh, Ganem, the the idea of daily growth in Christ is not an idea that many people think uh, upon uh, on a daily basis. Uh, how did you get into that group? Well, well it's, it's an interesting question. I, I, I've never thought of it that way. Mm. But now that you ask the question, um, you know, every day I'm growing toward the end of my life. Yeah. Every day I'm growing older. And every day I need to grow and learn if I remain still and I'm in trouble. I'm not growing closer to God's kingdom in my understanding and my faith and my relationship. So I think it's very important, very valid point to think about. Mm. As I never thought about it this way, that every day as I turn a new day, I need to grow with Jesus yeah. to be able, so I can be able to manage myself and take care of those around me in so many ways, emotionally, mm. spiritually, physically. Uh, we have those responsibilities. Well, I think you mentioned uh, a key uh, fact factor uh, in that we have to grow to survive. I mean, this is, we're talking about eternal life with Jesus. Yeah. And how can we spend that time with him if we don't know him? Well, and imagine if the next day you don't eat, you don't drink. Mm. 
you don't take care of yourself, what would happen to you? Mm -hmm. You become agitated. You are not going to feel good. Well, some people can fast like that, but mm -hmm. okay, go to two days, three days, four days. It'll become more of a crisis after a while. So living without crisis, without Jesus, it's you'll be creating a crisis for yourself in my humble opinion, in my own spiritual experience. Mm. Uh, Dr. Taylor, Gannon had an interesting point about uh, food and drink. Yeah, that food and drink is so necessary. It's more necessary than our ordinary food, that spiritual food that we get. And that's where we get really into the Bible. When I was a kid, we didn't really listen carefully to the preacher and the announcements being made. And they talked about a revival. And as a little kid, I heard revival. And that revival, <laughs> something happened to the folks. Yeah. Their lives were changed. So we need a revival. And that's eating and drinking of the word of God. Uh, Guilherme, the, this idea of, of um, food and drink as an analogy, I mean, we already know that the Bible is called the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life as well. Yes, uh, we totally need to be rooted in him, connected to him, and always seeking him, right? Uh, in life, we seek something. So we need to direct ourselves mm. to the true source of fulfillment, Jesus Christ. Wow. Uh, Sheila, uh, anything to add about uh, this, this concept and idea? Um, you know, you, you said it all. I think really just spending time with God and surrounding yourself with um, people like all of you, you know, who teach us about Christ, you know, going to church, people who um, know the truth, you know, surrounding yourself with that. And um, resources like LLBN that point us towards Jesus. Yeah, we're, we're so lucky to have this ministry to point others to Jesus uh, while we share and, and uh, testify about his love and, and his soon coming. I mean, kind of obvious. A ministry that had changed all of us here. Mm -hmm. at LLBN, and, and, and it is changing the lives of many out there, Marlon. Mm -hmm. It's a great ministry. Well, uh, if you got your Bibles open to Second Peter uh, chapter 1, uh, let's uh, hear the message there from our special guest, Glamoury Borda. Uh, he's from Andrews University, and we'll tell you a little bit more about him later. But there's a stand right there that you can take, and uh, let's see what you have to say to us. Glamoury? I'll put this here for now. Yes, uh, before we begin, I would like to just have a quick word of prayer as we open the Bible. Dear God, guide us in this moment of reflection and study. May we know more of your will for our lives, is what we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to join me by going to 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, we're going to begin with verses 1 through 4, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And this is what the apostle wrote. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior have been delivered from sin. God has graciously delivered us, but He has also graciously provided for Christian living. As the text, the text says, he has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He does not leave us 
lacking of what we need to walk in Christ. Godly living, faithful Christian living is only possible because of God's gracious deliverance and His gracious provision. Christian living is, in other words, is enabled by God's grace. Our Heavenly Father desires to restore us. In Genesis 1, 27, we see that human beings were created in the image of God. However, sin has corrupted us. It has marred that image of God in us. But God, through Jesus Christ, has come to bring reconciliation between us. And He desires to make us partakers of the divine nature. He desires to make us Christ-like. He wants to restore us. If we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 18, we read of that transformation that we can experience in our lives today. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God that we can, through Christ, because of God's grace, by focusing on the Lord, we can experience transformation. We can experience change. And we can experience this restoration again into the image of the Lord. In the New Testament, we also um, have reference to a transformation of the body, which Philippians 3 verses 20 to 21 says that it's a future event that will happen when Christ comes. But if we read, it says, For our citizenship is in heaven, for which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which He is able even to subdue all things to Himself. We need to wait for that transformation, that future glorification of the body. Right now, we need to endure the body in its vulnerability and its perishing state. But God will restore that too at that later date that we hope for. But now we can already experience God's change in our lives. Yes, my body remains vulnerable. It remains a perishing body. But God works in us. This transformation that we see in 2 Corinthians 3, 18, this transformation into the image of the Lord as we focus on Him, as we behold Him, as He is the sole center of our attention we become more and more like Him. We can experience this process of restoration by which God wants to make us Christ-like. If we continue the text in 2 Peter chapter 1 and we go to verse 5 and on, we read, the apostle says, but also for this very reason, for this very reason, he has just told them, God has made provision for piety, for godliness. He has made provision for all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has made that provision. God has these promises. There is this, this, this beautiful idea, this beautiful reality that we may become partakers of divine nature. God has Bring, brought us deliverance, right? He says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, in light of those realities, in light of God's gracious deliverance and provision, for this very reason, he says, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, 
brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, love. In light of all that God has done for us, his gracious deliverance and his gracious provision, we are to seek these things diligently. The apostle writes, giving all diligence. There is a lexicon, uh, which is another word for a dictionary. A lexicon generally is a more detailed dictionary. There is a lexicon that Bible scholars use a lot. It, we refer to it as BDAG. And I find it very interesting that in that work, they convey this expression that is here translated as giving all diligence. They convey it as make every effort. Do your best. I think this expression, do your best, is, is easier to understand for a lot of people, I think, than giving all diligence. But we can also think of it as making it a priority. In other words, we are to prioritize our spiritual growth. God is gracious. He has delivered us from sin. He is gracious. He has provided for Christian living. He has wonderful plans and a wonderful desire to restore us. He wants us to be partakers of divine nature. So in light of that, in light of those wonderful realities, we are to give it all we've got to that process. Lay it all at the altar of the Lord. The one who works in us both to will and to do. The one who works for us, around us, in us, enabling us, empowering us restoring us true growth in Christ now it's it's very important to remember that true Christian growth calls for diligence it calls for effort for doing your best but but it cannot happen apart from faith you see it's interesting that the apostle begins here add to your faith virtue faith is assumed without faith there is no Christian growth. It also cannot happen apart from all that God has graciously done and graciously does for us. So the whole process is dependent on him. But we need to remember the importance of faith. Faith in the one who desires to restore him. In faith, we are to seek virtue. In faith, we are to seek knowledge. In faith, we are to seek self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. We should seek to be virtuous like Jesus, to be knowledgeable in the things of God, to be self-controlled like Jesus. Think about what he went through at the crucifixion and how much self-control he showed when he took that moment to go through excruciating pain to take a breath and bring a word of hope to that thief on the cross who wanted to be a part of Christ's plan, his kingdom, a different kind of kingdom. What a self-control he showed when he prayed for the forgiveness of those who were inflict afflicting pain to him. But we should seek to be like him. We should seek to persevere like him in living according to the will of God, to be godly, to be pious, to be kind like Jesus. We should seek to love like Jesus loved us. You know, if you love Jesus, you will want to be like him. I like, uh, there's this philosopher called Linda Trinkaus Zegzebski, and she points out in her work, Exemplarist Moral Theory, that we have a desire to imitate the people whom we admire. When we admire someone, we want to be like them. And it's like that with Jesus. Very interesting. When we love Jesus and we behold him, there's no way but to admire him. Because he is the ultimate exemplar par excellence. He is the ultimate in what, when it comes to admirability. We'll admire him. And so when we admire him, we'll desire, wow, I want to be like that. I want to be kind like that. I want to be loving like that. I want to be like Jesus. And God has that plan to bring Christ's likeness into our lives, to make it a reality 
for us. So our daily lives should be arranged toward that goal. Christ's likeness should be a cherished target that we pursue daily for the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives, beholding Jesus and seeking to become a little bit more like him. And not just one item on this list. Some people may really like knowledge, but may not like kindness all that much. Some people may be really into self-control, but they are not very much into knowledge. We need to search and seek and pray for the whole package, the whole list. Bring God, give me virtue, make me virtuous. God, give me self-control, give me perseverance, give me godliness, change me. There's a passage from the book, Mind, Character, and Personality by the writer Ellen G. White that I really appreciate. On page 15, she writes, Day by day, we are all to be trained, disciplined, and educated for usefulness in this life. Only one day at a time. Think of this. One day is mine. I will in this one day do my best. I will use my talent of speech to be a blessing to some other one, a helper, a comforter, an example which the Lord my Savior shall approve. I will exercise myself in patience, kindness, forbearance, that the Christian virtues may be developed in me today. Every morning, dedicate yourself, soul, body, and spirit to God. Establish habits of devotion and trust more and more in your Savior. You may believe with all confidence that the Lord Jesus loves you, and wishes you to grow up to his stature of character. He wishes you to grow in his love, to increase and strengthen in all the fullness of divine love. Then you will gain a knowledge of the highest value for time and for eternity. Wow, I find it so remarkable. This, especially this part that really stands out to me. One day is mine. Yesterday is gone. I cannot change it. Whether I succeeded in walking in my Christian life yesterday or whether I failed terribly, I can't change it. I can repent. I can seek forgiveness, but I can't change it. But in Christ, it can be forgiven. But today is mine. Tomorrow, I don't know if I'll be alive. But today is mine. So let me dedicate that day to Christ. Now, as we pursue Christ likeness on a daily basis, there are a number of factors that can contribute to that spiritual growth in Christ. Of course, we should begin with faith, as the apostle assumes faith at the bottom of this often called Peter's letter. Faith is there, is assumed. Without faith, there's no true Christian growth. But, of course, faith is relational. It calls for communication, so we cannot do without prayer. So we need to have faith. We need to have prayer. We could also add fasting. But as we grow in Christ, it's not just according to my ideas. I need to have a standard, an absolute standard of, of objective truth to guide me along the way. And that's what I find in the Word of God. In the Word of God, I find God's will for my life. I find the rules and principles that comprise the framework for Christian living. And I find examples of what it looks like in the flesh, in this world. Flesh and bones of vulnerable bodies here walking on earth. What it looks like to embody these factors that Peter talks about. Now, there's another place you might also find exemplars really around you, Christian community. In Christian community, we can learn from each other. We can help each other, support, have accountability, pray for each other. It's not always easy. Sometimes it's easier to love my brother and sister. Sometimes it's harder. Sometimes it's harder for my brother and sister to love me. But together in Christ, 
we're stronger. We have to daily choose faithfulness to Christ and resist temptation. Now, we also are to remember not to make the devil's life easier, my life harder. So we should avoid unnecessary temptations, avoid unnecessary exposure to evil that might tempt me to lead me away. We should, as soon as we fall, repent and seek forgiveness in Christ who is there to forgive us, to remind us he paid the price of our sins. We should worship God so we can focus on him and be ennobled. We should serve other people as service is an evidence of true revival. We should serve also specifically by sharing Christ with those who don't know him. We may call it evangelism or missions. We should also mind of our bodies so we can have sobriety, mental clarity as we journey with Christ. We should practice Christian virtues. For example, if you want to grow in gratitude, remember to thank people for the positive difference they make in your life. And remember to thank the Creator for all that He's done for you. But the final factor that I want to point out is that we need to be willing to suffer for Christ. You see, when you are in Christ, you are on the side of life, you are on the side of victory, but you are also the object of hatred from evil forces. So you need to be willing to suffer for Christ. But remember, that suffering is worth it because in Christ you have victory. In Christ you have promise of eternal reward. In Christ, suffering and death is never the final word. In Christ, you can have restoration and eternal life. In Christ, as we walk with him, we can become better siblings, better parents, better uh, children to our parents. I can become a better version of myself than I was yesterday. And by God's grace today, I may become a little bit more like Christ than I was yesterday. Yes, this is a journey that we can be sure that Christ is going to be with us. He's there. He wants to make me like him. So I need to hold on to him because without him, there's no way. So hold on to him. Be faithful to him. When you fail, he's right there to pick you up. Hold on to his hand and say, Jesus, help me. Help me to walk with you and to grow in you. So today, let's embrace this pursuit, this pursuit for Christ-likeness. Let's make spiritual growth our priority in Christ. Amen. You know, I, I really appreciated uh, the point that you were making that if we follow Christ, we love Christ, if, uh, uh, we want to be like him. And I think that's the, the whole idea about being a Christian is to become Christ-like. I mean, how many times have we heard that phrase, Dr. Taylor? We've heard it to be like Christ. But you'll notice there in 2 Peter, God gives the promises. Yes. Yeah. And those promises are so vitally important for us. In 2 Peter, we see knowledge, information that we receive. When I was going through it, a math class came to my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, grace times faith, multiplication. And you'll get away from this in the world, subtraction, and add grace, add faith. There's addition. There's God's language of math for us in salvation. What he will do, the promise, is death, is resurrection. And that's where we receive that power. So you also talked about uh, the transformation. Uh, Romans 12, 2 comes to mind. To uh, conform your mind, not to the world, but 
We can't do that on ourselves, though. That's exactly right. We can't do it on ourselves. And it's very interesting that Peter, before he tells them, oh, add to faith, virgin, no, 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 he, look, all these things have happened. <laughs> mm. God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, he says. So it's completely dependent on God. Mm. It's completely grace-based. It's something that mm. without him, it won't happen. You can't have Christian growth apart from grace, apart from faith, mm -hmm. apart from Christ. I don't know what that is. You may try to talk about some behavioral change, but Christian growth is about a heart change right. that then can lead to changes in the behavior. Mm. But you know, it's not just about your behavior changing. It says love and to love sincerely. You also have to have a change inside you. It's not just about what you do outside. Love will, will overflow for sure. Love that doesn't overflow isn't true love. But it has to be changed there. So God has to be working in us. Millions uh, depend on that behavioral change. And millions are deceived that that's enough. Now, how do you reach those people? Well, I think many people... Uh, and it's very interesting because these days, uh, when you go on online, many kinds of different platforms to consume media, that's a hot topic. Yeah. To change and discipline and to become more productive and to be more focused, to have more attention. Uh, but it's very interesting because uh, a lot of people, they try and they fail. They, they, they fail to reach their goals and sometimes these are so important goals for their families but they fail to reach it it's very frustrating now uh i'm not my focus on my presentation is obviously not on productivity and all of that mm -hmm. but my point is that a lot of people they may come from a place of frustration of trying to just change by themselves mm -hmm whether it be in their work, whether it be in their relationships, broken relationships, parents who, you know, it's a sad thing that sometimes we do the worst things to the people we love the most. Mm. And then we look back with the greatest regret. So change is something many people want. They want to be able to be a better parent, a better sibling, a better child, but there's that frustration. So I think what we can help people understand is there is a way, but it's not by yourself. There's someone I can introduce you to who can work in you. That's Jesus Christ. Mm. While you were speaking and about behavior, behavior modification, I guess it, you could say. Uh, the parable uh, of the sower came to mind, uh, where the cast the seed on two of the three types of ground, you know, um, in our growth, daily growth in Jesus, which ground do we need to be on? We need to be the good soil that will bear mm. fruit. And that the gospel can fruitify. Now, we may also remember that other analogy that Jesus used also that involves mm -hmm. plants and horticulture and, and agriculture. That Jesus is divine. Mm -hmm. We cannot do anything apart from him. But if we're connected to him, then we're connected to that. So it's like a plant connected to the source of life from the Mother plant, so to speak. And then now, oh, that branch can get green, can flourish. And it's a beautiful thing. Mm. We need to be connected to him. And then mm -hmm. that life will be flowing through us. As we focus on him. And I, and I brought up this work by Linda Zagzewski. And I find it very interesting because she talks about admiration. We live in a world that leverages admiration. For we live in an attention economy, right? With yeah. media and advertisement and all of that. And we leverage people's admiration. As Christians, 
we have the most admirable leader ever, Jesus Christ. The more we focus on him, oh boy, it's just so admirable. It's just incredible. That drives us. Human beings were wired that way. We want to, wow, we have the desire. I want to be like that. So that keeps us with a north that even when we fail, we remember, that's my north. That's my north. Mm. Dr. Taylor, just back to the sower's ground. Yeah, the, the sower's mm. ground is the heart, the person, the life, the soil. Wayside listeners, the excellent book called Christ Object Lessons paints a graphic picture of what that different soil is all about. But when you read in First Peter, it's largely warnings and hard times. You get into Second Peter, the main focus is Jesus. Mm. Jesus, that's the focus. I've given you the promise. The Son came through the power of the Holy Spirit. Look what can happen in your life. And that's when I got into the math. Things will multiply. Things will be subtracted because you're now attached to Christ. And there was one theologian, I call him an African theologian, by the name of Augustine, who said, the God who created you without you cannot save you without you. Mm. It's accepting what God has done through his son Jesus, mm. that death and the power of the resurrection gives us hope. Mm. And I thank God for it. So that's that growth in Jesus, what it's all about. But we have mm -hmm. to cross the bridge from that culture years ago to mm -hmm. where we are today. And the language that we use mm -hmm. yeah. is so vitally important. Yeah. For example, one thing that we may consider, I find it interesting. On Instagram, for example, you follow people. But sometimes they post things they, ah, I don't like it. He's my friend. You know, I don't want to unfollow him. But, you know, his posts are kind of boring. What am I going to do? Well, Instagram has got you in a sense. You can mute that friend's posts and stories, and Instagram won't let them know that you muted them. So you don't see their posts, you don't see their stories, you still follow them. Now, it's interesting to me, what kind of follower is that? <laughs> that follows, but has no clue what the other person is saying, right? So as Christians, we need to follow Jesus, but we can't mute his posts and his stories. Mm. And where do we find them? In his word. In his word. So one thing we need to do is go to his mm. word. And that's, that's the point I was trying to make with the, with the <laughs> fertile ground. It's, it, you can end up in the other places if you don't establish that uh, relationship with, with Jesus. It, it takes to be involved. And how do you involve and get to know him without his word, Sheila? That's right. I, you know, I think what he said, complete dependence on Jesus, that um, fruit of the Spirit flows from us and continue, you know, it's a relationship with God. And, you know, I think most people think, oh, I'm going to attach myself to Christ because I'm going to be successful and, and all that. Really, true success is just focusing on Jesus and, and, you know, in this life, the enemy's the more you're attached to Jesus, the more you're going to get more attacks, you know, sometimes um, by the enemy to steer you off that. But, you know, when you become dependent on Christ and his love for you, um, it, it helps you have that peace and to endure whatever you go through in life. Gadam, mm. uh, Galerma uh, seems to indicate that the closer we draw to Christ and the more Christ-like um, we are transformed into his character, the more people will hate us. Yeah, those who are non-believers maybe will hate us. But that's most of the world right, right. now. But I'll make a short point here um, to change our behavior. You know, we can't do it alone unless it's worldly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But we can change it through Christ. And here's what the double benefit we get from that. One is, through Christ, I can change my behavior. My new behavior become a testimony, yes. a witnessing tools to others. Mm -hmm. And imagine if all believers rely on that power, because God gives us all qualities. 
all qualities that he possessed from heaven. And it's up to us how we use it. We can sit back and do nothing and gain all the knowledge we want, but do nothing. Or we can step forward and demonstrate God through our behaviors, through our life change, and draw other men and women to his kingdom. So that's, uh, uh, that's the essence, again, of our creator, Jesus. Without him, no, nothing possible. Through him, all things are possible. Mm. Well, we're coming up to our, our musical break, but uh, before we do that, I just want to give you the last word. What, what, what final message would you have? One more thing I would like to say is that, like I said, we need to look for the whole package, the whole list. And as we add virtue, one of the virtues is the virtue of humility. Mm. It's very important. That if I become a little better, that I don't become worse by becoming proud of having become a little better in that one thing, but then I become worse overall. So we should always stay humble, humble with Christ. Amen. He's absolutely right. That is the last word. Again, these are come from the qualities of God from heaven. Hmm. Humbleness, kindness, goodness, um, compassion, passion. I mean, all these given from Christ. And that's the source that makes us better individuals on this earth. Hmm. Josiane Bailey Abbasabas? Yes, you're saying. <laughs> She's at the piano. And, uh, of course, uh, you know uh, Ivan and, and Jason Peace, or Julie and uh, Peace, who've been here uh, since really little. Now, look, he's, he's a young man. Both of them are shooting up, and, and uh, we're so glad that uh, you guys are, are able to join us. Uh, the song that they're going to do is Near My God to thee, it's one of uh, uh, all-time favorites in, in Christendom. So uh, favor us with your blessing of music.
Nearer, my God, to thee. Uh, that's uh, Ivan on the violin and Julian, his brother, on the cello, uh, the Peace Brothers. And, of course, uh, Josiane Bailey Abbasamas, who is a newlywed. Congratulations. Uh, and, uh, thank you for sharing your talent with us and our, our audience. And, and uh, the praise be all to God. Uh, you Music like that brings real peace. <laughs> the real it's, peace. My God, thank uh, yeah. you, Peace Brothers. Peace Brothers. I'm sure they would like to um, be happy to, to uh, perform for you in your church uh, in the local area in Southern California. So if you're interested, uh, just contact Jay Hughes and he'll put you in touch uh, with them. Well, Ganem, it's uh, just about the end of the program, and uh, I think we have some special announcements that we need to do before we say goodbye. Yes, sir. We have several good announcements. Happy news. Uh, one, I just want to tell our viewers, because we love you so much, we continue to come to you 24-7 from LLBN with a variety of messages. And we thank God for giving us that direction, that power to continue broadcasting in nine different channels. Mm -hmm. Second, good news, we have three of our workforce here uh, having a July birthday. I'd like to wish them happy birthday. Daryl who's the director and he's a senior VP for programming, uh, Kevin, who is a camera operator in the control room, and then Evie, who wears every hat she asked to wear. So happy birthday to all three of them, and may God bless you. Mm. Couldn't do it without you guys, thank you. Another announcement is another good news, August 30th, mark your calendar. Sheila, I hope you're listening, uh, along with Marlon, uh, your commission, August 30th, <laughs> will have a special two-hour special coming to you live from our new facilities. We did one two months ago. We're doing a second one, testing the equipment, testing the technologies. But the importance is bringing Christ in the forefront again of our ministry. It'll be a four-half hour within two-hour special covering topics from creation to revelation. Sounds really exciting, doesn't it? it sounds like the whole book. It's going to be very condensed. <laughs> Uh, but it'd be a beginning for a 90-day campaign for the next 90 days, all Christian connections will fit that theme and will be on creation. Well, on creation will be Christ's ministry on earth. The third part of those four-part series, it would be uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, sorry, words, <laughs> I'm lost for words. It will be dealing with uh, Christ's return. Uh, but with that will be revelation. So it's going to be really fascinating, very illuminating. And we ask you all to mark your calendar, August 30th, 6 p.m. It will be in lieu of Christian Connections, 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, we're going to have a lot of music, multiple speakers, interviews, and much, much more. So mark your calendar. We look forward to being in your homes on that evening. Well, I know many of you, so many of you, loved the last two-hour special we couldn't resist. And so that's what we're going to bring, bring you, a brand new one, fresh. You're going to be there? I plan to be there. Yeah. And you know, I often drive by and with proud humility. I said, look what we have put up through the sacrifices of our people who support LLBN. It's a beautiful structure. And I'm, oh, my heart pumps with a new fascination mm -hmm. when I see what they've done. And huh. imagine the upcoming potential for this new space. The things we're going to be able to do is going to be many, many folds greater than what we have been doing in the past years. Uh, this is a gift from God, not for us just, just to look at and admire folks, but we're going to put it to work and put it to work effectively and productively through Jesus. Yeah. And we appreciate your support, although the building is... Um, uh, debt-free, uh, the equipment and what we need to put it in is not. Uh, that's about... Our goal to raise dollars? a million dollars between now yeah. and the end of the year. We have raised about $220,000 yeah. so far. Well, I think we need a million and a half, but let's just... Well, go ahead. Take it a st stay put a step. A million and a half go yeah. directly to serve God. Yeah. I want to thank Sheila for... Uh, uh, spending her night with us uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, one last word, Sheila. I, I love the homemade 
everything. I think what the music said near, still near, you know, to God. I think the more we hang on to God, mm. the, the warmer, the closer we feel His love. All out of time. See you on the next edition of Christian Connections.